You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Hey, and welcome to episode 372 of the show. This week features the return of Edward Reed, talking about his feature film, The E-Listers, Life Back in the Lane, the surprising success of his Atlanta filmmaking Facebook group, and much more. Hope you enjoy the interview, and I'll see you in the intermission. Welcome back to the show, Edward. How are you doing out there? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you for having me back after such a long uh, lapse. Yeah, 2015. That that seems it seems like a crazy amount of time. Uh, I'm sure tons of stuff has happened in your life, both film and non-film. Especially the past few years have been kind of crazy. But I guess I want to I, I want to start off actually with the Facebook group. Which when when did you start that? Why did you start that? And 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 it got and it's now gotten so big that it's now getting press. <laughs> it was in the AJC, which seems crazy. Uh, uh, so I kind of want to start there. Uh, there, tell me all about that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I started that. Uh, I think about the same time I started doing uh, trying to put together my own productions for uh, for independent filming. I wanted to get a group together where people could, uh, you know collaborate could say what they needed um talk about you know what was necessary uh for their film maybe sketch it out a bit and then start joining together and actually making productions um so that's why i started that and um i think was what why it's really grew is because um that's what's so necessary and Atlanta right now is is you have so many people trying to put projects together. There's a lot of independent filmmakers uh, that that need people to work on their projects, um, and they don't know about having you know how how to get those people to work with them. You know, it might just be a screenwriter with an idea, um, and he wants to get people to you know somewhat help him out or. Uh, uh, what, whatever it may be, uh, it's turned out to be the group where people come to get their projects. Uh, I, I think, I mean, put together, I mean, I'm not, it's it just, it's just really grown from there when I started it. And, uh, it's, it's just turned out to be a massive group. And it's, uh, I, I think in the end it's helped a lot of people because people have, uh, written about how it has helped and they've gotten distribution and it just turned out to be a really nice group. And it's it's really interesting because you started off the group to start kind of connecting people and 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 probably even help yourself a little bit like, well, you know, how do I meet people? This will be a great way to meet people. And did it start to realize you started to realize at some point like, man, this is getting kind of out of hand (laughs) because, I mean, it's still a Facebook group and you have to you have to start setting rules and and maybe spammers come in and and dealing with that kind of stuff. Did it just become like a job at some point? (laughs) Yo, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have um, I have uh, two moderators, but uh, the issue, you know, you have all these people that want to join that have just joined Facebook. Mm-hmm. They're from where I don't, I don't know why they post that stuff or even want to post that stuff, but people join. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, you know, I, I still allow people. We we allow people to post without moderating. Um, I I think that's good. Uh, especially because i mean we wouldn't have all the time for all the posts um but but i also try and you know i write 
write and make it clear if the group can help me if they see something to please you know report it um it's more of a, a group thing where people i think uh will if they see a spammer or, or if they see uh or if they see something that's coming out as a fraud uh they'll right away uh jump on that and i usually let that that um go for a while because the, you know we're in an industry where people are trying to take advantage of other people and a lot of people in that group have already been taken advantage of or they've already seen that person so when that person posts um they'll go ahead and start you know calling it out as a scam you know as a scam um so, uh, you know but there's a point you have to stop that as well uh but yeah it it it's it's become a lot like a it can be like a job uh absolutely um but uh you know the thing is from that group uh i've actually had a i have several other groups that i started and uh um because i realized within that group there's so many people looking for you know a certain position so i started one for production assistance atlanta where they could work together i did one for uh, uh screenwriters and i have one uh that i started for background about two years ago that has really grown into something uh uh really fascinating um as well i mean i i, I no longer do background but uh it they're very good in there yeah well, well speaking of background uh you were working on a was it a tv series about about extras yeah uh, yeah I, I i i feel like it was shortly after you came on uh yeah tell is that still going on or, or is that transitioned into something else or what's the status on that one yeah, that's uh, I started that out because uh, for me, I did start out as uh, background um, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm actually my background is I'm an educator. Uh, I'm a historian and it kind of turned out as a fluke. I had some time and I got on background and uh, I noticed uh, really the subculture and then the way people were, you know, the the all different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. uh, I did notice some of the shows that I was on. I just thought that I also thought dialogue, uh, you know, here's, here's these major productions and well, maybe pe I don't know, maybe people really like those kinds of shows, but I thought I would um, try and write something different, but I spent some time in background. Uh, I did get to meet uh, a lot of people uh, and uh there's a lot of people in background too who are starting out as actors they're wanting to be production assistants there's retirees um you never know who, you might find a doctor you might find uh, um it, you never know who you're going to find in the background um so i did start writing about that after the first one i shot was that pilot the grand prince of moscow that we put together mm -hmm. uh you know having no connections or no real place to go with that we did our best with that but you know that was one of my first shots um at putting something together so so for this next one i wrote it's called 64 over eight um, that's right yeah 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 that's right yeah yeah and that is still uh i mean it's funny because i talk to people and they they still know the show yeah uh, <laughs> They still they still remember it um, because it's I guess among backgrounders it's become uh, kind of like a cult classic. Uh, oh, nice. Okay, that's cool. Yes, yeah, so, I mean regardless of what you know, I I tried it as a pilot. Um, that's what I wanted to do. You know, I I wrote the series. Um, I wrote the first pilot and uh, uh, got the pilot together. And uh, what I can say about that though was uh, with the pilot you know, being that it was, uh, you know, this little cult classic or people kept sharing it or spreading it. Um, that's ultimately where I was able to find my, um, my investors. Uh, oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, once you see something like that and then you can say, you know, and then after that pilot, people are like, when are your next uh, episodes? They're always asking when are my next episodes are coming out. And uh, the reality is, you know, without funding, that's impossible. So I thought my best bet would to be uh, to write a feature film. And uh, 
and see how that would possibly work instead of doing a pilot. And I, I, I would suggest that probably for, uh, I, uh, for most people who are writers or trying to get into this, because I think a pilot is, you know, definitely an extremely difficult, uh, 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 thing to pitch. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. You also have to have all your, you know, everything together. You have to have, you know, you have to have it just perfect. And, and, uh, and from what I've seen, you know, and, and being in the Atlanta production group, I've seen a lot of people try and get their, uh, you know, their work picked up or move forward. And I've seen a lot of failures. Uh, you know, that just comes with the business and, uh, um, and I've seen some successes, but those successes are much rarer, uh, uh, than the failures. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going about writing, I would suggest, uh, trying to, to write a feature, but yeah, yeah. I was able to get the, the feature, uh, uh, I got investors for the feature. So, yeah. This episode is brought to you by Sapelo Insurance. Sapelo is Georgia's premier film insurance agency. With over 10 years of experience in commercial lines and with film industry professionals on staff, Sapelo offers you the insurance you need for your next project, including equipment, general liability, auto liability, workers' comp, guild travel, and more. Contact Sapelo when you are starting your next production. For more information, check out their website at sapeloins.com. that's that's great and and it and it goes back to the whole you know the people who succeed in this stupid business are yeah. the ones that just are persistent about it like you you it's 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 fine to to think well this project i'm working on is the best thing ever and it's going to succeed but then more often than not like you said there's there's so much failure in the ones that go all right well what what did I learn from this? What little things did I get out of this? Like you said, you met some investors, which is a huge deal. You can take to the next thing and get that hopefully even better, and then it's, you keep moving on. I think um, uh, that's one thing I see in in the Atlanta Film Production Group are people that believe you know that that the project they have is is gonna make it. You know, you're taught the American dream as a kid. You know, no, no matter you know as long as you keep you know, keep at it. You're, you're never going to fail. Um, you're the best go for it, you know, and and, and it, that that's something wrong with our culture and that's something wrong with some people as well. They don't realize you have to repackage it or try something new. Um, you know, I, I think success has come out of failures and I, I think I was capable of, uh, recognizing where I went wrong and, and not pounding it to the ground that this has to be a pilot or this has to be a series. Uh, and I, and I see a lot of people in that, that group who, uh, uh, are, are like that. And ultimately, you know, I, I, I see the projects and never even get finished. Yeah. Well, well, tell me a little bit about, uh, the e-listers, which is, which is the, this, that's the feature film version that you're, you're, you're talking about, I guess. Uh, tell uh, me all. No. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah tell me yeah. a little bit about that and, and, uh, the story and, and kind of actually, it'd be interesting to hear how you kind of repurposed some elements from, from the, the pilot into the feature. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I started, um, I, I, I mean, I looked at the pilot, I looked at probably what were some of the most, uh, uh, cause I, I would cut those up into clips as well and kind of post them and get feedback and see you know, which, which clips m- people were most liked or related to, or thought were, uh, you know, the most humorous to them. So, so I, I, uh, I looked at some of those scenes. I was able to put those into my, um, my feature film. Uh, like one scene is just a, a steady cam. Uh, walking around the filled back room, uh, a, a room full of background, uh, and it's a voiceover, and you're kind of describing each of the different, uh, you know, stereotypes that you have on backgrounders. And uh, the first one that went over really well, so I I, I put that in. Uh, mm-hmm. I put that into it. Um, I think ultimately, uh, being an extra or being in the background. Uh, 
the way that I uh, made the, I mean, I, I'm also in, you know, I like philosophy. I like studying philosophy. So I, I, I also saw this as a kind of like, a, I mean, I don't know if you've done extra or. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. I did a few when I, when I first started getting going in the business, this quote unquote in the business, I was screenwriting, but I thought, you know, it, it'd be fun to get on some sets and see some stuff. And I just, I remember how, how big of a jump it was from doing productions with my friends, like running around in the woods, you know, <laughs> like, Oh, let's go do this or whatever. And then you yeah. go on like a Disney production and you're like, Holy oh my gosh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yep. What are all these people doing? Like it was crazy. <laughs> trucks and trucks and tr you know, you'll, oh oh, my yeah, God, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I've definitely done it. It was very interesting. And you, and you do meet a lot of interesting characters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, I mean, as a writer that that was easy to pick up i mean it was easier to pick up on than if you're picking from a different kind of story where you have to um i guess really look into someone and craft it uh whereas on set you know being on set multiple times the characters were easier to uh come up with because they're real uh yeah so uh you have you know extras who are going crazy thinking that they're the featured you know, featured is a big word in the extra world. It may be someone who is, uh, their face is on camera for one second, two seconds, but that's their featured role and you'll never hear the end of it. Um, so, you know, little things like that. Uh, uh, people come on set to sleep people. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. 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 And then obviously you have the, the creepers that come on set. So you can always, uh, write something about those guys. Uh, they seem to come there just to pick up women. Yeah. Uh, but there's all sorts of people and, uh, writing those down into uh, a group. But ultimately, I wrote it down into like a core of six people, kind of like the gang, uh, you know, uh, generally a couple different types of characters. But I, I, I think really what... Uh, public and anyone really likes is a story of people that can overcome like overcomers uh, mm -hmm. that can get to the next level um, and background are definitely people who are the underdogs and uh, I, I wrote it in that manner uh, where the main person which I was able to cast myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're always if you if you ever write a film you're the one who gets the cast so that's always the nice thing especially if you're trying to be an actor yeah uh, so i wrote it, it basically uh uh in kind of a philosophy you know uh uh philosophical way where he's trying to get the gang the group to see what's going on here the wrongs the injustices and he's fighting to get past this and uh you know, I don't want to, ultimately he had been work. I mean, it's crazy. He had been working on a musical about background mm -hmm. and, you know, everyone laughs at him, all of this. And, you know, in the end, uh, I, I had it come up where, where that musical, you know, it's not a big success, but it is Hicks, you know, his success because the musical was picked up by a high school. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So in the end we film high school, uh, we we're able to get a high schoolers, uh, singing parts of that musical so you know um so that is his you know overcoming he he could not overcome you know everything uh and and the whole cast system but he was able to do something with what he had and uh um so yeah yeah i, I mean i i think the story is it's it's basically it's a it's a family movie mm -hmm. uh i mean it's a yeah it is a dark comedy it does have dark comedy elements but I, I i think it's a nice film where you know generally most people can sit down together and uh have an enjoyable evening and watch it yeah nice and and you mentioned that uh you you might have some distribution coming up uh, i do have distribution uh it's that's uh very, we're, it's very exciting <laughs> that's very cool yeah we're uh well we have to repackage it and uh we are gonna be well i am going you know i want to tell all um script writers screenwriters to make sure you copyright your material oh uh, yeah 
I think people don't realize uh, the importance of that. Some people think, oh, okay, I'll, I'll register it like at the Writers Guild or whatever. Um, but that copyright will come in very handy if there's problems uh, with the film. Uh, and, you know, uh, and actually that came in very handy uh, for me uh, at, at one point trying to get that film out. And that's why it's being uh, uh, re-released. But uh, the, there, I mean, I, so going through that distribution process, uh, was something, uh, really, uh, really, I wouldn't say it is, it is difficult. Uh, you have to, um, especially when some people are not working with you, you have to get, you know, you have your NDAs, but you need your work for higher contracts. Mm-hmm. Um, you need base. You need your insurance uh, for where you rented the places. You need insurance coverage on on the film. Like you have to have every single thing in order. And uh, and I think especially independent filmmakers like myself going into this, I didn't realize the extent of uh, what what was necessary. Um. So in the end, um, going through some hurdles and trying to get all of my stuff together, it maybe took like six months to get uh, all of the onboarding material together. And uh, then uh, at that point, you also have to have a lawyer, uh, you know, in case someone sues you. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a very uh it's it, it, yeah indeed it, it it was it was a process and uh i also want to say uh there's probably some di- different distribution companies i've seen distribution companies that actually ask for money from filmmakers yeah that's kind of like acting uh as an agent never give money to anyone mm-hmm. uh that's just a warning because i i i think someone has a film they're excited and they're eager uh, to, to get that out, um, with my distribution, uh, it was a percentage, uh, and they're going to, like I said, they're going to repackage it and promote it. And some of that, you know, the money comes out of that after the money's made, but, uh, relatively I did my research on this company as well. And, uh, several of their films have made millions of dollars and, uh, that made me happy. But another thing I've also learned in this, um, in this industry is, is, is not to have expectations. Hey, and welcome to the intermission. This is Chuck just breaking in real quick with some announcements. Next Monday, April 18th, Film Bar Monday is at Midway Pub. Next month, May 10th, my script 8-Bit Bloodsport is being read aloud by super amazing famous actors at Roll Call Theater. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be an 80s theme night, so make sure you dress up and get ready. Just It's got, it's a silly comedy, so get ready to laugh and have fun. Even if you think it sucks, just humor me, okay? No, it should be it should be great. The actors are amazing. So even, even if you hate the script, you're going to be like, these people are so good that I'm going to ignore Chuck's terrible writing. So come out, May 10th, 8 o'clock. And of course, I have to thank our sponsors, Element Certified Public Accountants and Consultants. If you love them as much as I do... Maybe you want to go work for them. Element and its sister company, Storyboard Financial Services, are hiring production accountants. They are looking for entry-level clerks and production accountants, assistants, and keys. Full-time positions include health benefits, retirement benefits, and immediate room for growth. If you're interested, please contact Element by visiting elementcpas.com. That website is also where you go when you need financial service help. The film industry is confusing when it comes to money. If you're not good with money, like say me, then <laughs> you need help. Maybe you need help with your taxes. I mean, you're cutting it kind of close here, but you know, whatever. Life happens. If that is the case, I suggest getting an extension, but you know, maybe call them first, Element. Maybe you need help setting up production accounting. Maybe you need help with the Georgia Film Tax Credit and all the questions about that. Whatever it is, if it's got to deal with money in the film industry, elementcpas.com, you can't go wrong. Element fluent in your language. Go get some money help or go work there and provide money help. Either way, thanks to them for sponsoring the show. And also thanks to Edward for coming back on the show. I mean, 2015 to 2022. It's always cool when people come back after that amount of time and just see their progression. Still working, you know, this industry, it's it's not, not easy. It's easy to quit. But some people are forging ahead and then 
after so many years. He's back. He's getting films distributed. So it's exciting to see. So I'm going to get you back to it. Be like Edward and keep working. Don't give up. Keep working on your stuff. Writing, directing, acting, painting, composing music. Maybe you want to compose music for films. The only way to keep moving forward is to keep working at it. Keep making connections. Keep making friends. Maybe go to Film Bar Monday, whatever. Something will break through eventually if you just keep forging ahead. All right, back to the show. Yeah, you're not you're not wrong about the the onboarding process. When we, my production company, uh, we shot a um, comedy special a few years ago, and we got it picked up, and that was an eye opener for us too. And they're like, "Do you have this and this and this and this and this?" And we're like, "Oh my god!" Um, and so we finally, I mean, we finally got everything, but it was it was definitely like, "Oh, this is the big leagues now. This isn't messing around. They need all this stuff, or we, exactly. or we can't. It can't go up." Uh, so luckily we figured it all out, but it was, yeah, it was very, it was an eye opener for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you had that as well with distribution. Um, but it, I know I'm working, my next one is going to be, um, more of a horror film, but I definitely know what I'm getting into and what I need to do. Uh, at least, uh, I think, or at least in a much better manner than yeah. what I did. <laughs> you know, because again, like as independent filmmaker you have no idea what is necessary uh really you have to have the the music rights you have to have Mm -hmm. everything has to be done and if you don't have that that's going to just make the process a lot longer oh yeah well well tell me tell me some uh some of your favorite stories from being in background i remember I remember one of mine wasn't a direct uh, story, but m- my buddy Garrett was doing background for a long time and stand-in work for a long time. And he <laughs> he said this one lady, she she was so determined to just be in every shot and she would literally elbow the other <laughs> the other yep. extras and just like, get out of my way. So she could be face first and then they would do a turnaround and she would do the same thing. And they were like, lady, you can't do that. You're... This, we, absolutely we're, we're flipping the world here and you're in the back and she's like no i want to be up front <laughs> oh my gosh yeah <laughs> and that's that's i would say that's that's not that's not uncommon people yeah, really yeah. <laughs> yeah and they think that you know I, I i think that's the sad reality of of uh, of some of what we're taught and what we believe that you know, whoever Steven Spielberg is going to be sitting there and he's going to see, you know, a yeah. second of her face <laughs> yeah. and go, Oh, that's her. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, I mean, people will uh, do anything to, you know, really get that uh, uh, featured shot. And when they do, uh, you know, first thing that comes up on Facebook is, is this featured shot. It's, you know, it can be a, a picture uh, mm-hmm. f- from their phone of the TV, uh, some are, you know, more high level and they actually have the clip. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, actually in that, that backgrounders group that I started, uh, uh, it's, that's something that really, uh, kind of, um, I would say, uh, organized it into organized itself into something really, uh, unique. I started that, I called it backgrounders stories from set mm, and okay. it was more, more of an area where people can share um, openly uh, about their experiences and uh, and not feel the wrath of um, of anyone saying anything or uh, or anything like that. So uh, I think uh, I think that really became a platform. And uh, we I, the two moderators that I have, we don't let anyone in there that's not background. Oh, okay. Yeah. They can be in, they could be an AD, they can be whatever looking for background, but you know, they they always say snitches get stitches in this group. And they're, (laughs) I mean, they're very serious about this group. It's a private group. And, uh, um, the things they say is, it's also a warning They They warn others not to go on different sets. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, 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 it's turned out to be a really helpful group and especially over COVID. Uh, oh yeah, but yeah, I think it turned into something that was really helpful for people. Uh, again, this is not any of my doing. I think 
what actually what I saw with things, at least in my Facebook, I'm not, I'm not a production assistant. I've never been one, but I saw that there was a need for people to, to, there was a need. And, uh, you know, ultimately, I mean, I'm not saying I'm, you know, I, I want to help people as much as possible, get to the place they want to be. Um, and mm -hmm. mo most of them probably will not, but at least I can start a group as a platform for them to, to actually start trying to do that. Um, yeah, I have another group called, uh, extras to actors. Um, you know, and again, when I'm in these groups, uh, I, I'm usually pretty good. I will find somebody who is, uh, who is a strong moderator, uh, who, who, who really is, is enjoying and, and, you know, taking care of the group but uh, um these these really grew organically uh you know i started it when i saw a need and i think that people saw that and they started using that as a platform i i can't say i'm you know i'm some some great person i just started it and and these groups all grew to a point where i i, I could never imagine yeah well, well, tell me about uh, production, uh, especially of the e-listers. E maybe, maybe something that you you learned on during this process. Uh, again, talking about that step by step progression. Something you learned on this production to take to the future. Maybe something great that happened, or maybe something terrible that happened. You think I'm never doing that again? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So, as as one thing I learned is is uh, I I think everyone should come into this industry uh being extremely careful about who they trust mm, okay um because i mean of course like you see these agencies eating up actors right now that are paying them um people people become unreasonable sometimes in their mind when they see something that may look great but i mean that wasn't really the point for me but uh, it's it's hard. I mean, this is in life as well. This is in life. I mean, you never really know someone, uh, especially when money uh, is involved. Uh, uh, when something comes up with money, things change right away. Uh, yep, so yeah. uh, that's one thing uh, I have to. I think I'm always going to be careful about now. Uh, I've I've learned quite well, and uh, and. You have to, you know, it's, it's, you got to be a night. I mean, I've always tried to be a nice guy, but in the end, you have to remember to put yourself first, I think. And sometimes I did not do that. Uh, by meaning that I was trying to help other people and uh, by trying to help other people that eventually stung me. Um, okay. Yeah. Because they'll, they'll, I think they use people, nice people. Um, and, and that's one, one thing I, I mean, that's more of a warning, uh, but the production itself, uh, uh, was great. And, uh, I can tell you, I think we must've had like 70 people come, I don't know, up maybe, maybe up. Yeah. About 70 people extras, uh, that came on set. Uh, uh, they did it for free. They knew me. They didn't complain. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, it was a very enjoyable experience. They still remember it. They loved it. Uh, I and I, I I think part of that production is is if if you have something that is is creative and uh, a good story and uh, and people generally like you, uh, that's another thing. Uh, decent people are willing to help you, um, and uh, you know you can also find that all in the industry there, you know, there's the good and the bad, but I mean, for me to have all those people come out for free, uh, and do that on, on their days off, or even, I think we did it on a Friday days that could be working just, just to be a part of it and just to help me, it shows you the, uh, the generosity and the, the decency of people. Film Impact Georgia is a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing a voice to independent film production in the Peach State. Their focus includes short film grants, development labs, community boosting events, and support services from vendors and mentors. 
Georgia has diverse and engaging storytellers, and FIG is determined to help break down the barriers to creation in our state. Find more information about the organization and how to get involved at filmimpactgeorgia.org. Yeah, especially if you mentioned building that good that goodwill with people over time, um, and people get to know and trust you, they 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 want to help. Um, and I, I bet you you really treated those background actors extra special because yeah, just because of the nature of the project, you 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 almost feel like you have to, but I'm sure you you wanted to in the first place just because of your Abs- background. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I, I definitely tried to make sure the catering was really yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. I don't want people coming back from my set saying, you know, oh, that production, they fed us, you know, crap, you know, potato chips or cheese balls. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there were no, uh, you know, actors sat with background, of course. Um, no one was any different. It was all just kind of everyone working together and uh, no one was above each other. Uh, and, uh I, 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 that's, that's how I like it. You know, you can talk to anybody, uh, anybody can feel free to talk to the other person. Um, Mm -hmm. and I'm glad. And another thing is, you know, with these people and this group, uh, it's just nice knowing you have loyal people that are willing to always come out and help you if you need, um, you know, some of these people helped me afterwards with some of the onboarding I had to gather, uh, I had to gather more, um, uh, signatures. I had to do more stuff. So people were more than willing, even after the project to put in their time free, uh, to help me on that. And, you know, I, and I, I never promised to pay them. I never said, you know, you're going to get a cut of this. Um, uh, again, I don't even know what's going to happen with this film. Uh, I, I'm hoping for the best, but it could just go out there in distribution and completely disappear. Um, but I also have a feature film now behind me. And I think, uh, that's important for any filmmaker. Once you have a film, it, it is actual is actual proof that you're capable of doing something. Yeah, and people are more uh, more uh, interested in investing in you in the future if they know you have actually produced something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, the whole the, the progression, like whatever happens, you made a feature film, and that is. I mean, I don't even have a feature film yet. You know, like that's been one of my things for a while. And it, yeah, it's just that's one of those dreams and you got it done and it's amazing. And it's going to yeah. be seen by other human beings, which is another amazing thing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And, and so far, the reviews were great. I mean, uh, I think there was one that said, oh, it wasn't worth my." But every review, you're going to have a bad review. Yeah. But, who cares about those people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always ignore the bad ones and just look for the good ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think some people don't even look at reviews. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you come to a point where it, it just doesn't matter. But yeah, that's a, that's a good point. My wife says, you know, no matter what you did, you did make a feature film. It's there. It's done. And uh, you've accomplished something. And uh, I think it's an important part, not just as a, a, a writer and an actor and someone in the industry, but it's an important accomplishment in, in someone's life. And, it, you know. Yeah. Um, something I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy about. I'm great. I'm grateful about because uh, of all the people who made this possible. Oh yeah. Well, so what's what's next, and how do you use everything that you've learned and, and accomplished so far to to make all these next things that you you said you had a horror film you're working on, which is which is super cool. Yeah. Uh, how do you how do you use all this to to launch yourself into the future? Well, I think now um, after. Uh, after this uh, last production, when when things were a little uh, screwy, I, I I just got overwhelmed and I stopped writing for a while, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, I had started thinking about the the capacity. Uh, you know, of course, I like horror films, but also uh, the capability for even a you know a, an independent horror film to gross a lot of money um, if it's done right, if it's written well, if the direction is unique. Uh, yeah. So I think I started. Uh, I started watching a lot of hor- like horror. My my wife hates horror, so it's always me by myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, I started watching horrors. Um, uh, and and just you know, there's a lot of really crappy ones on Amazon. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I can tell you that. But the thing is, when you look at some of them, their IMDb ratings, you know, are very low, but there's still 3,000 ratings. So they must have done something. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I want to sell a crappy horror movie. Um, but if I'm looking to get into also anywhere I like writing horror, but in a place where I might eat, be able to make um, some decent money, I think for an independent filmmaker, I mean, I don't think it would be a total horror, but it's more of like a thriller. Um, I, I, I think that's the place to be writing. Um, I don't know really how comedy sells, but, I, but I looked at some, I, I was watching some of the better independent horror films and I was, I, I would look at their net, um, you know, h- how much they made from the film. And, uh, some of those were really good. And, uh, you know, I, I think all of us in the end want to make money. So that's another part. Yeah. You, I don't, I don't know if anybody, well, maybe some filmmakers do and go out and intentionally make a, a, a bad horror movie or whatever movie, but most people, I feel like even if the outcome isn't great, they they set off with the best intentions. Like I've got this great idea. I think it could sell, which is, which is important too. Uh, I think people will watch it, which is great. And then something along the way doesn't go so great, but then it still gets picked up and people, people watch it. You know, it's just the nature of things, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but you never feel like, I don't feel like a lot of people go out and like, I'm going to make a crappy horror movie. You know, it's just the, it's just the nature of the beast, I guess. Cause it's, you can make something spooky for not a lot of money, which is, which is ideal. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I, it's interesting. Some people have gone out of their way to make crappy horror movies. And I think there's one called like House Shark. House um, Shark? I haven't seen yeah. House Shark. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at these like they're just really bad horror movies, but they make them that way on purpose. And they're there like, it is, the, House Shark. What in the world? <laughs> it's a shark that attacks people in their house. Nice. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, I absolutely agree. No one goes out of their their way to make a bad, bad film. But I I think one of the biggest issues is production value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have like people will put out their film and you notice that the sound is bad. Everyone's going to notice that. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, So I I think things like that. Um, But, you know, um, another thing is those people who made that crappy horror movie still made a movie. Um, So I give them. Yeah, yeah. I can also say congratulations on that because that's a lot more than most people have done. Um, it might, it may not have, have turned out to be the best film, but they did it and, uh, and good for them. And they tried and they put it, I mean, when I said crappy, I didn't mean to be like putting down a lot of horror movies. I didn't mean to be a very critical person, but when I'm watching them, I'm also trying to figure out ways uh, for myself uh, to make them, you know, better. No, yeah. I mean, I'm a I'm a huge horror nut and there's so much it's I mean, really cheesy, I guess you could say instead of crappy cuz a lot of stuff can be cheesy, cheesy bad and also cheesy good where you're like I'm have this is a terrible movie but I'm having a lot of fun, which is yeah, a fine yeah. line to to thread, but you can do it for sure. But then you have to look at these these movies that are to get the green light for massive production and they're awful too. I mean, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I think all of us set out to make uh, our story a good story, and sometimes we fall short, and I, I've definitely done that uh, uh, a, a, as well. And uh, each time uh, we learn something from it, and we try and make the next one better, and uh, every everything is always going to be a learning experience. Oh, yeah. Well, cool. Well, uh, as we wind down, tell everyone where to find information about about you and all your projects and websites and social media profiles, et cetera. Sure, sure. Well, um, I am. Uh, it's the Atlanta Film Production Group. Uh, that's the main group. Uh, it has kind of uh, linked groups. There's one for uh, uh, extras. It's called Backgrounders, Stories from Set. There's one called uh, uh, Production Assistance Atlanta. Um, uh, we have one for, like I said, uh, extra to actor and we have Atlanta, uh, I can't even remember the name of it, but it's, it's, I set that up, uh, at, I think it's a linked group, but I, I set that up especially for, uh, filmmakers to, it's Atlanta film showcase. 
Mm -hmm. okay. uh, it's where people can actually show their work. Um, and uh, I thought that would be good for people to just put their work out there. Uh, uh, we we have had uh, we have had um, some um, uh, mixers. Uh, you know, that's for me. It's been a hit or miss. I had one there were like 150 people. The place was full, and the next one was five people. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm also trying to uh, uh, put together uh, with Nick Conti. I'm going to try and put together a, um, kind of like an industry showcase for new actors. Um, have some actors come speak. People maybe try and get an agent out there so they can learn more about if they're if they're new or if they've just moved to Atlanta. Um, so that and yes, I'm going to charge for that that one. Um, mm -hmm. I have to somehow, you know, monetize this a little bit. And I'm also thinking about, uh, uh, maybe putting, I know there's some real companies that put reels together. Yeah. 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 But, uh, I, I see, I, I see another need here, uh, where people are constantly trying to find reels and, uh, um, I've thought about that, I kind of sketched it out, organized it and, uh, um, I uh, may try and put together my own uh, real service as well in the meantime. I mean, and to add to this, yeah, I, I have a, I have an 11 month old daughter. So this is uh, uh, a, a great new addition for my life as well. Oh yeah. Congrats on that. That's, that's uh yeah, that's gotta be tough balancing all that with the, with the baby. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm, and also finishing up some more, uh, 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 coursework. I mean, I already have my, I'm trying to figure out, finish up some more coursework for another master's. So I got a lot on my plate. Holy smokes. Okay. Sheesh. All right. <laughs> well, well, cool. And congrats on the, on the film and all your, all, all your other stuff. It's very exciting to hear. And it was great to have you back on all this time. It's glad, I'm glad to hear that you're still working and, and making things and, and good luck with uh, this project and all your future success. Thanks so much. The AFC Indie Filmmaking Podcast is produced by Zombie Cat Productions and Tranquil Aggression Productions. Your host is Chuck Thomas from AtlantaScreenwriter.com. Editing is by Joshua Golke. Find him at AtlantaFilmmaking.com. Music and event recording is by Michael Breezy Keys Jones. He is found at LDXSoundLabs.com. Zombie Cat Productions is owned by Molly Coffee. You can find it at zombiecatpro.com and her at mollycoffeedesign.com. I am your announcer, Rob Scheimer. I can be found on SoundCloud. My profile name is R-O-B-S-H-I-M-E-R. Thanks to our media partners at cinemaatlmagazine.com and thank you for listening. Grab all our episodes at afcindiefilm.com.